So how does trusting God impact daily living? More amazing than the Old Testament miracle of man in the desert, Jesus came as God's daily bread from heaven. When we trust and partake of him, living in what he's already done for us, we can find real contentment. Jesus is more than enough. He promises us that if we trust in him and pursue his kingdom first, all our daily needs for life will be provided. What difference does trusting God make with possessions and resources? God has given us all we have. He gave us Jesus and entrusted us with resources for life. He's expecting that we be wise, work hard and maximize his resources for his glory. One day, God will inspect what we've done with his resources and will reward or punish accordingly. Celebration and more entrusted to the faithful, but severe judgment for the lazy wicked. What does trusting God mean for finances? First, we need to remind our hearts of Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Everything belongs to God. So if God owns everything, then God owns our money. Totally, completely, 100%. From this money given to us, God calls us to give to his work in the world. So the big question is, how much? In the Old Testament, under the law, how much was answered by the first fruit tithes and offerings? First fruits were a symbolic gift from the first and best portions of the harvest. Giving first fruits demonstrated a trust that God would continue to provide. The tithe was literally 10% of a person's harvest income, given to support the ministry and workers of the temple. When God's people gave the tithe, all ministries were fully funded, the needs of the poor were supplied, and God promised to prosper. Offerings were free will gifts above the law requirements of first fruits and tithes that funded special projects for the benefits of others. Today, how much we give is not determined strictly by the Old Testament law. Jesus calls us to live out the heart of the law. Through faith in Jesus, the church is called to be generous as God is generous. God the Father loves each person in the world. He gave us his only son, Jesus, who gave us his entire life. And after Jesus died for sin and rose again, he asked the Father who gave us the Holy Spirit. God overflows with generosity. In the church, in a worship response to the grace of Jesus, how much do we give, is perhaps not the right question. The better question is, how much could we keep for ourselves when Jesus gave all of himself for us? But God doesn't need us to give it all back especially to him. Instead, he asks us to live generously, following the Holy Spirit, giving according to what we have towards the tithe and beyond in joyful sacrifice. Trusting God makes all the difference. We can be content in Jesus. We can learn to be wise and faithful with his resources. We can find joy in generous, spirit-filled living. And all this for the glory of God.